Hey everybody, welcome to Nomadic Moments. I'm Jake. Uh, I'll be your host today. Um, this is Yolam, our trusty home on wheels. Yolam stands for You Only Live Once Mobile. It's kind of a mythos of ours here at Nomadic Moments. So there's basically two parts to Yolam. The first being the truck. That's a 2008 Ford F-250 Super Cab. It has the extension there. And then the second part is the uh, camper. So that's a Palomino Bronco 1500. Uh, it's a 2009 model. And we've done a lot of renovations to both, really. So the reason why we wanted a camper over like an RV is, is this guy can go anywhere. The Ford F-250 is a 4x4, so high clearance. Um, the pop-up uh, actually lowers 18 inches, giving us a 9-foot clearance. It's going to be able to, to take us wherever we want to go. Um, but anyways, today I'm going to be showing you around Yolam. Uh, so you can get to know uh, our trusty home. Let's go check it out. This is what 98 square feet of living looks like. So it's seven feet wide and then 14 all the way across onto the top of the bed there. We've done a lot of renovations inside of this camper. Uh, this is just to show you guys around. We'll do in more in-depth posts about each one of the renovations, uh, so stay tuned to the blog. So the first thing to make a full live-in camper livable in our day and age is really electricity. Um, so we had to make sure that we could make it work. The Palominos come with uh, what's called shore power. So a converter converts 110 electricity from the grid and then makes it into a DC system that can pass throughout the, uh, the camper. So that wasn't gonna work for us because we don't wanna be plugged in all the time. So what we decided to do is we went solar, like most people. So um, there is 500 watts of solar power on the roof. We'll go into the electrical system more at another time. But for right now, just know that we have two 330 amp 6 volt batteries, which means basically with our consumption, our power consumption, we can stay off the grid for about three to four days with almost no sun. So typically we're not going to have to go in unless we're like in the northwest where it might rain for a week. Um, that might be a problem. But out here in Colorado, we're, our batteries are full up by noon. So th this is our front door, that's where you enter. Um, right here on the left, there's some cabinet space, uh, that's pantry stuff mostly. On top, we have these portable bins. Those, um, those are our clothes. Uh, Jennifer has two and I have two. They store underneath the table when the roof is down. So when the roof is up, we have 77 inches of clearance. Uh, so it's a nice high space in here. Over back here over the cab, this is our um, queen mattress. It's a full size queen. Um, it sleeps from left to right across the cab. So depending on how you park and how level it is, uh, you might, pillows might be over here, and they might be over there. Um, nightstands, we need a nightstand. So as you can see back here, uh, this is a net. That's Jennifer's nightstand. Um, so it allows her to put things in there. Um, this is a uh, Hugs. Uh, Jennifer can't travel without him. So we got one stuffed animal or mascot. We got one mascot named Hugs. Uh, my nightstand is on this side and it is actually a license plate. So it folds down. So when we want to drop the roof, we can just fold it up. So here on our left, when you enter the door is our bathroom area. Nice custom made curtain. Got this in the Philippines. Um, it's just Velcro. What it allows us to do is basically it expands the bathroom so that it doubles the bathroom when you want to get in there. But there's our toilet. It's a Thetford cassette toilet. So I replaced uh, the, the toilet shower combination that was in here uh, originally. Uh, and I did that because we did, it didn't have a gray tank and we needed a gray tank to live full time. So I had to have a space for that. And I didn't want to be going to Blackwater sites all the time. So the cassette helps with that. So I'm going to do a more in-depth post on this, but those are the reasons why we went that direction. So 
And then next to the toilet, I had, like I said, I had to put in a gray tank. So this holds like sink water um, until we can safely dispose of it. Uh, you're probably wondering what this pipe is hanging out here. That's our antenna. Um, so to get internet, we need um, an antenna extension. Um, that's for like LTE. Over here above the toilet, we store our hiking gear. It's really just the backpacks. Um, the hiking gear is actually in the cab. Um, we have some toiletry area here, as you can see, keep some stuff there and some, some more storage. Then we move into our kitchen, <laughs> lots of separation there. Uh, this is our Dometic fridge, uh, so it is a refrigerator, it looks like a cooler. It's a top opening because heat rises, right? So when you open it, the cool air stays down, so this is more efficient than a front loader. Our old model ran off about 15 amps. This bad boy runs off about two and a half amps per hour. So really good, uh, really efficient for our solar system. So I redid this whole area, um, put in some shelving here for um, various things, but mostly was thinking spices originally. All right, moving on in our kitchen here, we've got a three burner stove that runs off of propane, which is really nice. Um, and then we've got our little tiny sink Wanted to make want to make this bigger so that may be a project in the future. Uh, we got all our little things over here for cooking and storing. So uh, these are glued down. Basically, they're command hooked, strip things down. Um, probably wondering what this is. This is actually the wires from the solar system. So you want to take the most direct route when doing a solar when you're doing a DC system. So the six gauge cables that go from the roof to the batteries go right through there. And this is a piece of plastic with a slit right there. So as the roof drops, it slides within itself and allows the wires to pass through. So and also in the kitchen, we have some cabinets. Then over here, adjacent to my nightstand <laughs> is more cabinets um, and a hat rack. Underneath the burner is the, um, this is our furnace. It runs off propane as well. Keeps the house nice and warm. Inside of here are some wire access and plumbing access. We've got our uh, switch bay for all our electrical because we want to be able to turn things on and off so we're not draining the batteries. Um, this is our shore power connection. So if we do need to plug into the shore power, we've got a switch here so we can turn it on and off. Underneath the refrigerator, this is a netting that we basically put up with a whole bunch of command hooks. Um, so it allows us to get access to cooking supplies. So like our pots and pans are underneath here and they're strapped in so that when we're traveling off road, they can't fall and bust. So underneath the furnace here, there's a door that accesses the truck bed. Uh, we've chosen to put our laundry in here uh, for obvious reasons. Nice to not have that in the camper. And this is a trash bag. So it's got a command hook. On the other side of the kitchen is actually the living space. So we have a U-shaped couch here with a nice table. This table's portable, so it'll go inside and out. Um, I have a, a leg for that, um, and I'll show that in a different post. But that guy can go outside. And then over here in the corner, we've got our USB connections, and we've got a um, solar controller. So that allows us to see what the batteries are doing. And then underneath this bench is our water tank. So I had to put in some access spaces. The grills are, are custom, so um, that's to give airflow to the inverter, which is actually just on the other side of this wall. But you can see our batteries back in there. We keep some other storage devices in there. And then our 24 gallon water tank, fresh water tank is sitting there as well. So. There's only one thing that's constantly on the battery and that's this guy. That's our carbon dioxide detector. So we wanna make sure it's important to keep that working. Up on the roof, we have a skylight, which is kind of nice. And then everybody needs a fire alarm. There is also a max air fan. This has dual direction capability so it can blow out or it can blow in. Um, over the bed, we have another fan uh, access there. That one's a blowout only, but if this one's blowing in and that one's blowing out, we can get nice airflow over the bed. All right, so that's it for the inside of the Palomino camper. So let's check out the truck next.
this is the driver's seat of Yolam. Um, so we did some modification to the F-250 as well. So there used to be a bench seat here, or at least a uh, what they call a jump seat. So it would fold down, fold up, create a bench across, um, which was nice. But there's only two of us, and that's kind of how we want it. Plus, we need to uh, we needed to optimize space and weight. So as part of the renovation process, we removed the jump seat altogether, and I built this armrest to go here. Um, it's just one gigantic storage unit basically um, and the reason why we did it as you can see we have a lot of stuff so um, there's just a bunch of things like camping gear that won't fit in the camper which is ironic um, but so that's what that is um, got us three cup holders which is really nice because the uh, f-250 only comes with two got our nice trusty level here so we can see how level the uh, truck is because Sleeping at an angle can be difficult. Uh, this is a sticky pad for phones and things so they don't slip off. There's a storage access panel on the passenger side of the vehicle so we can store more stuff underneath the cup holder. Uh, we also have a uh, Pioneer stereo which is nice because we can get uh, navigational directions and things on there so we're not constantly having to look at the phone especially when I'm driving um, alone to like the grocery store in an unusual town. So yeah, the armrest and the stereo were the big uh, changes up here, but as you can see, we've cut off the cab so that people can't see behind it, so we had to put in, we had to install this curtain back here. The reason why we did that is because we have a garage back here, and it's pretty full. <laughs> so our bikes sit back there. Obviously, I removed the back seat. Underneath in this custom-made box is more storage for uh, mostly winter clothes. So this is where we decided to keep our winter uh, apparel. Um, don't really need it in the camper, so at least for half the year, probably more than that, because we're gonna be staying in sunny environments. So yeah. Here on the passenger side, you get we've got another storage area underneath here which allows us to put our chairs and things like that, longer items, hiking poles, stuff like that back there. And then underneath here, uh, underneath the tires, you can't see it, but there's another storage area there. One of the first renovations I had to do was get the Bronco, the, the camper, to attach to the truck. So uh, we're using these Happy Jacks um, tie downs to hook that up to the frame. So this is actually bolted into the frame and then you can hook it on with chain and these are turnbuckles so they tie down nice and tight. So that's not going anywhere. When everything you own is in, in a camper, you think about safety. So um, we also put in installed new locks, but at the same time, I wanted a really good deadbolt because the dead, deadbolt on these isn't much. It's real thin. You can see it right there. It's a tiny itty bitty thing. Um, so I wanted something that was a little beefier. This is actually a deadbolt so you can latch it down and nobody's getting in um, our outdoor shower head is there and then um, we've got our access to our hot water heater so that we can uh, light that up and and uh, and get some hot water so on this side we have more uh, storage in this hole and then this is our propane tanks so we have two two dual propane tanks so um, we can be off the grid for quite a while with the propane. So just in case 98 square feet isn't enough living space for two people, we also have an awning uh, which will give us an outdoor space. And that's that tube right there sitting up there. So it just unzips and folds out, pops right out, and we end up with a nice 8x4 space out here um, in the great outdoors. All right, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Yolam. Um, Stay tuned and we'll uh, share with you on nomadicmoments.com how we did each and every one of those upgrades. Until then, we're going to keep traveling. <laughs>